And last but not least, if you want your corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. I made my living off the land. This corn's beautiful. With aching back and callous pain. A lot of things gotta go right, yeah. The old man said you read what you sow. This could be some pretty phenomenal numbers. Out here in these fields of gold. Why well, it's called yellow gold. Crazy year, right? I'm an early riser, no nighter. They call me Cloud Boy, yeah. I'm a fighter. Ain't gonna stop till they put me in my grave. It's gonna be a fun year. I'm a This episode of Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Uh, right now, we're gonna see if we catch the rain before we make that decision if we're gonna come back in at R2, R3 time frame. See what our potential is. You know, if it's worth attacking, spend that extra money on it, we'll go back out here and spray it. And if we can't get the moisture, we're gonna stay 90. We're not gonna get any rain. I hate to say it, but for ROI purposes, sometimes the best thing to do is just walk away from it. There's a lot of hen yield within test weight. So don't get too caught up on rows around and length, because boy, you can really make it up in test weight. But in saying that, you have to have moisture for the test weight on that corn. Uh, you don't want to get too, too deep in a crop. It's just not going to be there. Man, driving through here, though, there's a lot of two years. So a lot of times, you know, the two-year effect, guys will actually drop the population, give the plant more room to be able to capture two years to one stock here. And as you can see, you know, as far as we can look in here, it is all two years all, all the way on. So yes, we've had stress this year, but the one thing with corn, it does love sunlight. We've had great sunlight capabilities this year. So it's looking really good right now. Very pleased with it. It's not every year that we can capture two years at this high of population. Normally the higher population you go, you know, you're going to give up the ear size, plant size. If we can get some rain here to keep it going, boy, I'm, I'm really excited. Shedding pollen pretty good here. As long as we can keep these babies still fed. Like I said, we just need moisture. We just look at the ground here and look at the cracks. What I'm trying to prove here is that you can have 300 plus bushel corn and it can be practical. You can do it on thousands of acres. So we try to do multiple site locations and do them over, you know, mass acres. That way we can really get a good look at it. We're spraying Veltima foot fungicide today. It's really just trying to keep the leaves clean, trying to add more test weight here to help their pollination. We've been really hot and dry. Once again, the rain's been pretty scarce. So we're really looking to feed it one last time here to help it. Brian does a great job of just communicating. Brian even comes to me and says, hey, what happens if we do a trial here? Or let's test this here. It's just a great, you know, great practice that we have. Today I brought Mac Cook from BSF in here today and he's gonna talk to you guys about the great product. Hi, I'm Matt Cook, Innovation Specialist with BASF. I cover Southern Ohio and uh, today we're out here spraying some uh, Veltima fungicide on corn that's right at tassel. And Veltima kind of has three attributes that we like to talk about. Swift, simple, and secure. So a swift, um, it has extremely fast knockdown of any disease that's out there currently. Uh, and then we'll talk about um, how simple it is to use. Yes, we find that tassel is probably the best bang for your buck as far as timing goes but we have an expanded window where we can go out at like V10, V12 corn, maybe five, six foot tall corn where more growers can get over it with their ground rigs themselves. So it gives you a wider application window. The last one is secure. Uh, the reason why we talk about security is we have the longest residual 
uh, of any product out there. Uh, you know, you can go out there at that earlier stage and still be protected uh, throughout the rest of the growing season. Let's use a product that allows us to control something. Uh, Veltima has excellent control on uh, the diseases that face that we face in this area every year. So northern corn leaf blight, gray leaf spot, common in southern rust, and uh, as well as tar spot. So let's control something that we're able to control this year. As soon as we get done loading this airplane up here with another round, we're gonna head straight to the fields. No matter what the weather throws at us, Pivot Bio Proven is harnessing what is naturally within the soil, making nitrogen available to the plant. Where I applied Pivot Bio Proven, the average across the whole field was about a five to six bushel an acre benefit. And we know that large rain events are not gonna leach that nitrogen out into our water. It gives you kind of that peace of mind that you're gonna have 25 to 40 pounds of nitrogen that's there and safe. To make this a financially and environmentally sustainable business. Today is July the 6th, 2020. Today's my birthday, 42 year old day. We've got Colt Barber here with us today. So we're gonna look at some corn. We're gonna enjoy the day with him. We're blessed to have him here on the farm. So y'all come on, let's go. What's up, buddy? Hey, man, how you doing? All right, buddy. Good to see you. Hey, I'm proud you're here today. Glad to be here. Welcome to God's country. Thank you. We're going to check uh, some sunflowers. We're going to okay. check some cotton. Nice. And we'll ride by an agri-gold test spot, too, that Beautiful. we put in. Need to run around here right quick and check this rain gauge. There it is. Let's see here. Exactly, inch and a half. Yep. Around the 4th of July, which actually, you know, we got four and a half inches last week. Hey, Eric, with that much rain right here this time of year, are you seeing any problems with fungus in the corn? Well, Colt, we've already applied four fungicides okay. before it's got to this stage. People think the fungus is coming. No, the fungus is already there. It's already there. The fungus starts from the ground That's right. up. The only bad thing about the rain that we had is our cotton. It's washed it away. I mean, yep. it's gone blank. We've replanted. How many times do you replant? Twice. And when we replanted some corn, I replanted about 100 acres of corn, and I'd be damned if it didn't do it again. But let's get in the truck, and let's go up here and look at some of these crops. This ground right here, Colt, this will be the 58th crop of cotton, back to back to back to back. 58 years in a row. This is all the family right here. Wow. This, is, this is a seed after it's been ginned. You know, we store it, we sell it for dairy feed, and 80% of this feed goes up north to these big dairy farms, these big, big dairy farms, the one with the carousels, whatever. I mean, we save 10 to 15% of the seed for a local farmer. Right. We got a local farmer here that runs a lot of cows and feeds a lot of cows for right. a guy in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, we save some for him. The thing about this place is family owned, family operated. And this is the only gin around this area that 100% of your product stays on this facility. I love that. Well, you've got great warehouses, and then their staging area is, is absolutely wonderful. Colt, what are you seeing as far as insect pressure right now? Not real bad. As the more rain that comes, it gets it gets worse. I don't know. I know the amount of rain y'all have had a lot of washouts, but you know, if you got good scouts in the field, then they're keeping an eye on it, and hopefully you catch it in time and can, and can spray. You know, I've always been very thankful for the cotton farmers and people that are ginning the cotton and keeping it local like you're doing yeah. and, and establishing the, the farmer base. And I mean, that's super, super important. Let's get in the truck and go check this corn out. I'm ready. I mean, I've only been growing corn five years, but I'm close to breaking that 400 bushel mark. I think it's well within reach. I mean, we had some last year go 349. Really what worries me right now is this rain. I mean, yeah. it, with the fungus. And the thing is, it's, I like the rain, but we're missing the other pieces of fuck. Sunshine. Sunshine. Because we get a lot of rain and we get cloud. A lot of rain and cloud. A lot of rain cloud. Yep. You a lot have of rain to cloud. have that sunshine in order for it to turn it into fuel yep. for that corn. That's the way it is um, up at my place is that, you know, we got rain and then we get clouds and we'll get a little bit of sun 
and then more rain, yeah. and then cloud, two days of cloudy, humid, and then no sun, then more rain, and it's been in this cycle constantly. Right here is one of our agriculture test plots. This is one of the farms that took some abuse. It's 70 acres in this field, and we replanted probably 30 of it. Every little low spot, every little swag, killed it, dead or in a hammer. All planted the same day, all planted the same population, 32,500. You know, we got several different varieties of through here, and they're all agri-gold. The first thing I look for is the stalk height. Yep. You know, I want a good girthy stalk that's going to hold 300 bushel corn. Yep. Really. Overall, it looks it looks decent. Yep. One thing about it is it's going to show us what happened in poor condition. Exactly. What do you think, Cole, about what's going on here? I think the structure looks good. It's healthy. I see two varieties, three varieties that are already performing, outperforming the others. But it's looking good. I'm anxious to see what the yields are this year. I don't want these brace roots coming out like they are right here. That tells you that, that plant was planted too shallow. That there, that's a perfect example. That's, a good one right here. that's how it's supposed to be. You should never see them brace roots sticking on the top of the ground. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's pollinating, boys. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's got a good tassel on it. Good silk. Look at that. Look how healthy them silks are. Real good looking corn. There's over 500 silks in that. You know that? Yep. Oh. Look at the leaf structure on it. That's the ear leaf. That's the one you want to protect right there. right there. You know, this this corn right here took that, took that 34 degree morning. It, it, it took that frost on it, you know. And, and yes, I know the difference between frost and freeze, guys. Uh, I got mixed up that day, but you know, it took two mornings, 34 degrees. Heavy, heavy frost on it. It was yellow, is that right there? Leaves are nice and clean. Veltima did its job. So we've been going through so much heat stress, the plant will actually roll to try to protect itself. It's very important to understand when this when this plant here is rolled tight, looks like a cigar out there, it looks white, please don't waste your time and money spraying that corn crop. It's just that plant's not going to be able to take it in. Don't spray in the heat of the day. You know, do what you can, when you can, when the time is right. So once again, it's just attention to the details here. So, and this is what we did. Uh, I had to talk with Brian Fisher before we did it. Man, I just love that guy to death. Pays attention to the details. You know, he's constantly calling me, hey, it's this temperature, corn's still unrolled, it's looking good, we're gonna keep going, and he'll call me and say, hey, it's starting to roll here on me, I think it's time to shut it down, come back tomorrow morning. And you can't ask for anything better than that. But what I wanna look for, you know, is just the uniformity, boom, 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 boom. We don't have any runs in here. I mean, we're gonna have some here and there, but we wanna keep it as few and far between. We don't spend a whole lot of time on trying to baby feed it or doing special things. Like I said, this is for mash production, trying to cover as many acres as we can. So when we can still have 300 plus foot bushel corn here, this is looking great. I think we'll be, be well on our way as long as we can get some rain. For research purposes, we'll go ahead and Pull both of them and see what they are. One thing when I always count, you know, rows length, I always try to stop around here. We're gonna have tip back, Mother Nature, you know. This is a really early count. I call this best case scenario counting. This is when you get your hopes up. But after a long season and a year like 2020, sometimes you need something to to boost your spirits up. So but if I can have an average of 17 throughout that field. You know, eliminate all the 12s and 4s, keep 16 to a minimum, finding 18s are great. But if I can have an average of 17, I'm tickled to death with that. I'm not going to lie, I'll take, I'll take a positive right now and I'm going to get my hopes up. Because I'm going to count that we're going to get some moisture and we're here to win it. This whole point of intercropping was to capture more sunlight and and one mistake can really hurt you, and I made that one mistake, and it's all within technology. I knew better. I got to go the same direction and then do my 10 inch shift from the same direction I was going. Uh, for some reason, the technology just has a two inch drift and it'll, it'll shift over. 
I planted it this way, turned around, came back this way, and that's what you don't want to do. Gonna make it easier to harvest, but not what I was trying to go after. We already know from what we learned last year on this, this will have a yield drag because of that. Sometimes your best laid plans, all it takes is one mistake. This one is a operator error, and you have to live with it the entire year. Yeah, on, on, on this corn here on the 10 inch, we are seeing multiple ears on the outer row. Right now, it looks like only about six of the rows are actually taking full advantage of the sunlight. So once you get in a little bit farther, we really start losing that, uh, that effect. But once again, this is 10 inch, so it's not practical. We'll go back over the 20 inch side here. This is just a fun plot. I try to keep things fun and interesting, and this is my little fun little playground right here, so we're gonna have fun with it. I'm very pleased, very happy. This is awesome. I mean, this is really, really awesome. Some of the best looking stuff we've ever had, but we're also severely dry right now, and we're gonna need rain really, really quick. So we're Mother Nature dependent here. Hopefully she can help us out. And if she can, you know, I think we're gonna give everybody a run for their money. I've never tried 84,000. I've tried 60,000 before, never 84. This is great root size for this size plant. Pretty impressive. So the one that got split road is a little bit smaller than the original one here. Root mass is bigger on the original one I was planted first compared to the one I was planted second. Like I said, there's still a lot to learn from this. That is great root mass size right here. For This is 84,000 plants out here. So it's had everything put on it in furrow, you know, try to make work, try to help it. It's been taken care of. Way too early to tell if this is gonna work, but to this point, hey, we're here. It's looking good. This also had Pivot Bio on it. Hopefully this will help us throughout the year, keep this plant going strong. So far, so good. What were the uh, planting conditions when you planted this, this field here? We ripped this field. We put two ton of chicken litter on it in the fall, okay. in November. We and let it sit? We, no, we ripped it. Ripped it? We okay. ripped it with an inline ripper. Don't disturb the top of the ground. We left it till springtime. Okay. People don't think compaction is real, but it's real. It will rob from you. Yeah. The corn is about this much taller before we ripped it. We dropped it at two inches perfectly, and that's why every seed come up the same day. Silk is great. It's healthy. I mean, if you if you folks, if this was a where you could touch it yourselves, you would be mighty impressed. It's just piled on it, and that's you know that's a good healthy corn plant. It's got good girth. You can see the spacing, perfect spacing. Yep. You see the brace roots are in the ground. You know, with the, that we looked at earlier, they were out of the ground. And this this here, is it sitting in the ground? It's good and strong. This crop is a long way from being in the bin. Yeah. We seen Dan's corn this past week, hell storm. Yeah. Exed it out. I mean, it can, it can happen to me. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to salvage this here right here, guys. A lot of people would not like the way I just done that, pulling that ear off there. But guess there. what? It belongs to me. That's right. But you can see there, look how long that ear is. Yep. I mean, you know, we've seen Kevin several times take and lay that over top of a dime and it covered a dime up. Yeah. I picked that up from him and that's what I want to see. White, solid, no discoloration, tips good. I mean, you still got some room to grow. And like you said, look how big, look how long. And that's a baby. That's a baby. And it, it really does look, that ear will be I'm that, impressed. It'll be that long. Yeah, I'm impressed. So Eric, this is something new for you. This is irrigated. Yeah, this is something that's totally out of my comfort zone. I own this farm right here, and we've had this reservoir on it. It's got thousands and thousands of gallons okay. in it. And I thought, well, man, we need to capitalize yeah. on it. So I don't know anything about it, guys. And this is this is getting me back to square one right here. Uh -huh. I had to call some friends on 
when to water it, how to water it, when it's too early, when it's too late, what am I looking for? Look at the mass and then the root mass on this one plant. Everybody's always, oh, you won't shake the dirt off of it and show the, show the roots. Well, there it is. I challenge anybody to do that. That ain't easily done. If you want to, we'll run up here and glance at these sunflowers right quick before we go back to the shop. Absolutely. That's what you want to see right here. Yep. See that bumblebee in there? They're called a clear field sunflower seed. We've got a guy that sets his honeybee hives up on our cotton fields. And he he makes honey, and he and the name of his honey is cotton picking honey. And he brings us a couple cases of honey every year, but a lot of people don't understand we need this right here. We need this to keep our ecosystem going. Yep. We need these bumblebees. Eric, have you heard that the, the uh, bee population in general is, is down, is the bees are dying? People think the bees just pollinate you know, flowers. No, they don't. They pollinate cotton, they, they pollinate sunflowers. You think it's got nectar in it, they're gonna go get it. Yeah. And we need that in our ecosystem. We need to do more things in, as farmers. And, and this, this makes me feel good. Yeah because They're I'm healthy. doing my part to help healthy. the ecosystem. Here he's back, they're healthy. What I do is, is after they mature out, dove season opens September the 1st. About two weeks before dove season, I'll come in here with a small bush hog and just cut strips, yep. and you're gonna keep them coming back. And you see why I put it here. You see that power line, look. I'm not too good of a shot, but I'm gonna get me something to butter some biscuits with. I promise you, I'm gonna set on that power line.